y'all, Flow Riders, and welcome to another edition of The Flow. Actually, welcome to our Bon Anniversary edition of The Flow. Did I say that right? Is that, was that You're close. Enough? You're close. Okay. Well, how do you say it? I don't like being close. I like being right. Bon Anniversaire. Oh, Bon Anniversaire. You got to say it with there that, you proper, go. There you go. that proper Quebecian, yeah. French, Canadian... Yeah, and I'm sure someone I'm sure someone on the chat is like, nah, Katie, that's not it. <laughs> Wait, but you can do it. You're Canadian. You have it built in. I'm in that's Hawaii. That's true. Faking I'm it. not French Canadian though, so I still definitely true. can screw up the French. Yeah. So it's uh Montreal and Toronto. That's all I know. <laughs> you gotta say Toronto like that. That's what yep, I heard. You from sure my do. <laughs> you sure do. Anyway, it is our one year anniversary. Our birthday or whatever, we have done this show flow for a year. This is mm-hmm. episode 50. One. 51. 51. Ooh, that's, right. I, I, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Because I, I remember, I remember because I just was waiting for Luis and Luis was making fun of me for last week. <laughs> Luis oh. said that Frederick and I took too long with the episodes. So he was going to take longer to edit it, but we went way over because it it's me and Frederick. It just happened. It was so fun to, I, I watched <laughs> it this morning as I was editing and grabbing the transcript and it was such a fun episode. Frederick, you are such a joy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Isn't Frederick watch, awesome? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. well, Kenny's used to this. She's seen us do this live for like a week solid. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so it was it's kind of fun. It was really, really great. But yeah, so with this which is really amazing to me, and it's actually better that it's 51, because we m- skipped one episode. We basically covered an entire year, and we only skipped one episode, and that technically was the 4th of July episode? I believe so. I believe so. <laughs> take, me, take me all the way back to last month, and I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, last month? What the heck was that? You know? Like, imagine that, folks. Like, One of the things we talk about when we were talking about starting a podcast or whatever, and even in the very beginning when we were going through this, we mentioned this whole consistency thing. And we're like, we'll just do this and see where it goes. And then, you know, maybe we'll end up with a 10 episode podcast like heater that we can show to people when they ask about Ecamm and podcasting. And we kind of (laughs) overshot. I'm just saying, right? You know, we're like your dad. You keep showing up, so we keep we keep doing 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 it, right? It was like the Griswolds, you know, and not asking for directions. We're just gonna figure this out. So here we are on our vacation, fifty-one shows later, and congratulations! But congratulations, everyone! I wanted to point something out because everyone in the entire family sees this, and I don't know if you get enough flowers for it, but everybody says, "Oh my God!" Like it's really fun to watch you now compared to you when you first started because the level of growth is like phenomenal right thank you and i just grabbed my first ever i think it was my first ever live stream so my first interview was back when i first started we did this meet the pros series and what's even funnier about it i've told the story on a bunch of different shows but what's funny about it is that i joined to do this series i joined the company to do this series And yet there's like three, I think, or four episodes before mine of just Ken, Glenn, and Midori being like way too nice to me and being like, I'll host, I'll host next week. Because I was just like, um, I'm good. You guys, you guys can host. I don't want, I don't want to host. I was so scared. I was so scared of the idea of being on camera. I don't even really even know why. Um, Um, But yeah, I was absolutely terrified of it. Right. You hear me say this all the time. I think people say that. Because they heard other people say that and they feel yeah. that it's a valuable excuse. And not mm-hmm. even from an excuse standpoint, but I think there's a bunch of things that we all say and do that I know from a psychological standpoint aren't real, but enough people say them that enough people think it's a thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because we had a little bit of this conversation yesterday. And I just wanted to explain to people that there is exactly 110% something is being overexhausted, overexerted, or burnt out from just trying to do too much things. But there is absolutely unequivocally no such thing as creator burnout. You can't just add an extra word to a DSM-5 thing and then make it a thing so that people who create can have an excuse not to create. I'm like, sorry, I'm not going to let you have that. And I think that camera shyness and stage fright 
are two things that people say that everyone adopts because it's the easiest way out. But no one's really that way. Because if you ever watch people at karaoke in the beginning, the party sucks. You got to have a ringer to kick it off. And then a couple of slits is in later, everybody be like, we are the world. We are the little bitty African children. We are the ones to make the better. Well, get off the stage, Mike. Please get off the stage. Don't tell Mike. <laughs> like, it's really funny, but everyone is like this. So I think it's just something that people say that it's just they copy each other and it's not real. And there's a bunch mm-hmm. of, you know, like old school sicknesses. Remember the, the old moms used to tell you that you were going to get this if you did that, right? Like if you eat a watermelon seed, you're going to grow watermelons in your stomach. Impossible. Yep. <laughs> but people believe that for a hot minute, right? It, camera is like that. Anyway, so let's get into our stuff. So today I thought it would be fun. Our first ever episode was all about podcasting on YouTube. And I know that George had a question specifically about how to start creating video on YouTube. So I thought we would just dive a little bit deep about how to get started on YouTube, how to start a podcast on YouTube, and how to, for maybe for the second half, we can talk a little bit about how to move a podcast over to YouTube or pick a podcast up onto YouTube if you don't want to fully move it over. So no matter where you're at in this journey, we can talk a little bit about why you want to be here on this platform and what the value is. So we should start, I guess, by saying that a year ago, one of the, one of the kicking off points of this podcast was that Doc had been saying for a while, YouTube is going to get into podcasting. YouTube is going to start being in this podcasting space you know, YouTube has been talking about it for a bit. They, they are going to pull the trigger on this and we should be there. We, you know, we are a company that makes a video production software, a live streaming software. It makes sense for us to be talking about podcasting on a platform that is built for video that is focusing in on podcasting. And it wasn't, I don't know, I can't remember the exact timeline, Doc, but I think it was like a month or so after you had said that and we had started up with this show that YouTube was like, podcasting is here. <laughs> yeah. Big announcement. Surprise, surprise. You know, since then we've been on this trip of telling everyone we can of the value of YouTube as a podcasting platform and of the you know workflow that we've been using here on the flow and why that's important. So I think what I would say maybe to start is that certainly it's valuable. It's valuable for all of the obvious reasons, like the size and scope of YouTube, the potential audience, the fact that video is probably the most complicated, quote unquote, part of this process. So if you start with it, it everything is kind of downhill and easier from there. But I think really, too, it's if you can figure out how to do this from a podcasting standpoint, then it's much, much easier for everything else as well. So like you can build and grow an entire YouTube channel with a podcast. You can have your podcast as part of a larger YouTube strategy that includes, you know, recorded and live videos. There's a lot of different options for you. So I think it's it is an easy starting place because podcasting is you know, thinking about it from a show perspective just makes it a little bit more contained and it makes it easier to figure out like what you're going to name your channel, what the cadence and the schedule is for posting, all of that kind of stuff is I think a little bit easier for people to approach from a show perspective versus like, I want to start a YouTube channel. That is, I think, a little bit harder to wrap your head around. So this is true. And here's what it is, right? I think a lot of people think that starting a YouTube channel is what the personality channels create. But there's a bunch of channels, channels you watch all the time that are nowhere near personality channels. For instance, Mm -hmm. there might be that your local news provider, your six, your sevens, your fives, your eights, your elevens, whatever they are, have a YouTube channel. All they Mm do is legit pull clips out of the six o'clock news and put it on there every single day. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's it. So a channel could be whatever you want it to be. And personality channels are actually the hardest thing you could probably do on YouTube. Making a channel where you are edutaining someone or educating someone or just providing an escape for them for whatever that they do. There's people who legit just sit in their shop and they lathe a bowl. Never speak a word. They Chuck it up. I know because I watched this mess. <laughs> they chuck up a <laughs> block of wood, tighten it in the lathe, grab a handle, and they do that for 20 minutes solid. Never say anything. At the end, they got a bowl or a plate 
or a lamp, candlestick, whatever, Mr. Mustard, and they take it off, and that's it. The next week, there's another one. They don't say anything. So a channel could be anything. So let's not overcomplicate YouTube. YouTube itself is actually easy. What most people are doing is trying to overcomplicate it because they think that you have to be Mr. Beast, and you do not. And no, most, yeah. you can't be Jimmy. Jimmy is barely having a hard enough time being Jimmy. He don't need another person to copy him. Yeah. I think that's a really, really fair point is that a lot of us just, we're thinking about it as being much more of a huge thing and an irreversible thing than it actually is. <laughs> like, setting up a YouTube channel takes maybe 15 minutes and you can start doing it without having all of the stuff ready, without having all of the plan ready. And if you make one and then you decide that you want to, you know, you hate it, you want to delete it, you can delete it. You decide that you want to go in a different direction. You can change things about it. There's a ton of flexibility and potential. And I, I would say start, as we've been saying all the way through this show, just start and fill out as many of the fields as you possibly can. And when you hit a wall, save and then go back to wherever you stopped because you needed XYZ extra thing that you had to get and go back and continue filling it all out. But the most effective way to do it is really just to take a look at what YouTube is asking you to input and make sure that you have all of those things as complete as possible inputted. Because that is really, I think, where a lot of people end up falling short is that they're like, they don't put an about us. They don't take advantage of like the custom naming conventions, or they don't read what all of the different inputs are that YouTube is asking you for. And the more information you give YouTube, it's a search engine, the better chance you have of being able to grow and reach your audience and, and become a really effective channel. So you know, your first step is just to start, start filling it out. You will need, I guess, the basics of what you'll need is a name, <laughs> some sort of name and some sort of content idea, I guess. But I mean, it took me I probably 15 or 20 minutes when I started the VHS Club podcast. I created a logo, <laughs> quote unquote logo in Canva. And, you know, I, I went through kind of general styles and ideas that I wanted. And with that and the name, it was 15 minutes until I had a YouTube channel and I filled out every single field. And I've gone back and edited a lot of that and changed it and grown it and added all the stuff in as I've gotten better at this and have done more of this. But it started with just filling out all of the inputs on the channel page so that we had everything that YouTube was looking for to get started. A lot of it has to do with just understanding that this is actually, in the end, easier than doing an audio-only podcast. Mm. And mm -hmm. back in the day, this wasn't true, which is one of the reasons why it's become so much more of an argument. It wouldn't be an argument right now if we started here. But in the past, you could get a podcast placed on an audio channel. You just record the audio, you throw it up, give the feed the lips in, and you were good to go. Before YouTube, you had to store your videos on a, like a WordPress site and then connect that up as the media to the RSS feed. And that could get out of space real quick because back in the day, you know, for 50 bucks a month, you got one gig of storage for your website, like one whole gig, you know, and that was considered incredible. And for the beginning of doing podcasts when video started to gain a little traction, which is around, I want to say 2009, it was more like 07 with Kevin Rose and Leo Laporte, but it really started to gain traction for other people around 2009. And that was because the initial Apple TV came out. And when the Apple TV came out and the iPod that has a little screen on it that can actually play videos, which I have in the drawer mm -hmm. right here. They came out and Apple added a video-oriented RSS connection to Apple Podcasts, so at that time, iTunes. And so then people started doing it. I know that I started doing it back then. Uh, Leo, Kevin, like all of our old school tech crew, that's when we started. But you, at that time too, to just record something with a camera and capture it into a computer required a bunch of the steps, right? We had the bondy blue bubbly iMac that could <laughs> use a firewire cable, but that was too time consuming, right? So we were looking for what was known as like um, higher end capture cards. 
at that point, we were trying to get 720 video into a computer that we could edit and then boom, get it to the business and go. So it was just a pain in the butt. And then it became easier. And so YouTube made it so that you could throw a video and store it and not pay an arm and a leg. And so everybody kept saying, YouTube needs to do podcast. And they were focused on their own swag for the longest time. But once they turn the faucet on, it's on like Donkey Kong. So starting a YouTube channel, simple, always has been. A podcast is just a playlist on YouTube. That is it. So it's not complicated. Don't overthink it. Don't be like, I need to do a podcast on YouTube. If you take any playlist on YouTube that is of any substance and check the box that say it's a podcast, it's a podcast. <laughs> and if you're not there yet, so like if you're doing this from scratch and you're starting a new YouTube channel, like Doc says, fill out all of the information. And then as you start either uploading or live streaming your first videos, start creating playlists. For example, the VHS Club podcast, I have a different playlist for each different like era of videos that were of movies that we're reviewing, right? So that's like one playlist is 80s movies, one's 90s movies, etc. right? So it's really easy. And then I have one that's shorts. But the more that you label and the more information that you're giving to YouTube, again, the more that they're able to take in and show your podcast and your show to all the different people that need or want to see it. So again, create all of those. I'm not at the point yet where I have a large enough audience that I've unlocked YouTube podcast. So my mind is not an official YouTube podcast yet. But you better believe that every single description that I'm putting in, whether that's in the playlist description or in the actual episode descriptions, I have the word podcast. I have podcast as a hashtag. I am constantly through both the video content and the titles and descriptions and keywords, letting YouTube know what my episodes are about, that it is a podcast, that it is a show. You know, I'm, I'm defining and categorizing using their tools so that it's really easy to be able to get picked up by that player. So, and this is relevant information again, George, you know, who is newer and hasn't kind of fully gotten into the world of YouTube yet. It really, again, a lot, a lot of this is really relevant, whether you're doing a podcast or a live show, or you're just starting a YouTube channel to be able to upload recorded videos. It's really just self-defining, filling out the fields and going back and making any edits. If there's something that got, you know, changed or added or you decided that you wanted to take it in a different way, go back and make those edits and make those changes. That's fine. You can always do that. And all of that extra information is just helping your content become more and more visible. And the more you do it, the more features will get unlocked. You know, yeah, on the Ecamm yeah. channel, we're always seeing features getting unlocked, right? Trailers got unlocked for us. The ability to, to uh, what's it called, where the video connects to like the next video, like the live video goes, redirects into redirects. the next video. All of those are features that YouTube allows users to have as they grow their pages. So the more following and presence you have, the bigger your feature set gets. So keeping an eye out on those as you're logging into YouTube on a regular basis is also going to be great. Oh, now I have access to this thing. I can unlock and use that now. One thing to remember, right? I sort of appreciate what you said. Okay. The reason why you do everything the right way and all the way through the right way, because some things have a threshold and the threshold is high because YouTube's either testing or they want to make sure that it's fully baked before they release, release it, right? So every day we get emails as to, well, how come I can't do this? Because, well, I don't have 4,000 channels. That seems unfair. Unfair to who, right? It's YouTube server. So you can roll your own. You can roll your own right now tomorrow that says you don't have to have any. But the reason why you want to use YouTube is because it's the biggest thing in the platform, right? You can start a clothing store in your yard, it's not going to be the same thing as doing at a Westerfield or Golden Gates Mall or something, right? You're doing it in your yard. It's totally up to you. You could do it. The reason why you want to be at the mall is because that's where the bodies are. So the reason why you're making your videos and putting them on YouTube is because that's where the bodies are. YouTube also has a right to say, I'm not going to put the corn dog stand at the end cap where Sears goes because the corn dog stand cannot generate a hot dog and a stick. That's what it's called. You can't generate the same traffic that a Sears can generate or mm -hmm. a JC Penney's or now whatever the anchor store is because both of them are half gone. So yeah. the reason why they have these numbers and these thresholds and things is because they have to make sure that you're coming there, you're being performative, you're not a robot, you're you know, a real deal person. Once they get their resources in a row and they understand how it's going to work and they've ironed out what they think are all the problems, they normally reduce those stands, right? 
So some of the things that used to require 4,000 subs has moved down to 1,000. Some things have mm-hmm. gone all the way down to 500. So you do it the correct way because any given day, YouTube will come in and be like, ah, change my mind. You only need 500 and then boom, now it's turned on for you. So mm-hmm. it's almost like putting in reps as a backup quarterback or a understudy in a play. You got to know all the lines. You got to do everything just like someone else because that day that Valerie goes, <clears throat> oh, she can't sing. They're going to be like, Katie, you got to stand in for Valerie. And then <laughs> you, you got to go over there. What life through young women over. breaks? It is the East, right? I mean, that's what it is. So <laughs> you have to do the right things, people. You can't say I'm a half ass it because I'm not all the way there yet because YouTube will just ignore you. You're not doing the right thing anyway. And there is no fair unless you own YouTube. You are stuck with the numbers that they give you. You don't get to be like, oh, that's not fair. And sorry, you're frustrated over such things. <laughs> It's not fair that the app store don't let you do something. Well, make your own app store and watch what happens. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I, the benefit of this platform is its reach and the fact that it is free. It is free and immediate to get up and running and started. So this is easier than setting up a website. This is easier than, you know, a ton of other different options. So yeah, take advantage of it. But, you know, again, like when I say to fill out all of the fields, like there are things that you might want to work your way up towards. So like when I set up, a channel. I fill out all the fields as completely as I can, right? But then as the show is growing and getting bigger and starting to develop different features or cool things that I've decided to add into it, I can go back and add those into my YouTube channel. So, you know, I can go back and decide that like, oh, I think it would be actually really helpful to add in chapters so that people can click to exactly where they want in the video, right? So things like that, you can go back and add those in afterwards. The video can be up kind of gaining momentum before you go back and add that in. That's fine. You know, or you can build that into your process. I think what you said in last week's episode, I saved as like a quotable that we should share over and over again. It's this idea of trying to keep as consistent as possible. And the way to do that is to create an easily repeatable process, right? So whatever that initial easily repeatable process is, do that. And then once you're in a really good comfort phase and you've been doing that for a bit, then add on the next thing, right? So for us, it was, let's just get up and running. We know that we're going to do this show every single Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do it live. And once we had done that for a little bit, then it was, okay, you know, now we're going to take the transcript and add that in as subtitles to each episode when we upload it. Okay, now we're going to add in chapters so that people can easily find their way through the content. Okay, now we're going to add in clips that we're going to share across social media sites so that people can discover additional information. So all of those things are things that we were building onto an, a repeatable process, something that was really consistent for us. And that's how you're going to continue to show up on a platform like YouTube. And that's how you're going to continue to be able to unlock some of those additional features that will help you show up to more people, right? So it, it's kind of a self-replicating process of The more you show up, the more you show up to more people, right? I think uh, also Andy brings up a good point. Like, you don't need to start with everything. You just need to start. And I think, Mm -hmm. again, I don't know where we got this thing from. Like, everything has to be sort of perfect in order to start. Like, I really don't know where people started with that. And it kind of needs to stop (laughs) because so many good things right now are sitting on a table somewhere in idea form that someone needs to just bring to the table but they have it because they're wanting it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of it like either Star Wars or the MCU. Uh, MCU started with what? Iron Man. And then later we got to Captain America, which goes backwards. And then way, way later we got to Captain Marvel, which is number three. But I mean, here we are 23 (laughs) movies later. They started in the middle and like, oh, snap, we got to go back. And then we got to go back. And then we got to go, oh, now we got to go forward. And we're breaking Mm -hmm. off. So like, But we wouldn't have MCU if we never let out Iron Man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it has to come out. Or same with Star Wars. We wouldn't have all the rest of the Star Wars empire if it wasn't for 77. 77 had to come out for there to end up being this total dominance of something. We thought, oh, man, our kids never going to understand Star Wars. We were lucky. We were around in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, it just blew up. And we're like, oh, hey, welcome back, fam. Now we have something that you can connect with people. Like, I was thinking about you when you were on vacation because we started Emma on Indiana Jones. We watched the first oh, one nice. the other day. Yeah. And now we're in a rabbit hole 
<laughs> and so now I had to go back and rewatch all of the Indiana Jones. Again, like yeah. everything had to start somewhere. And in order for you to get going on this, just do it. Just do it. And we'll, we'll perfect it over the time. But we all know that there's technically no such thing as perfect. Yeah. I, I mean, I think like anything else in this, it comes down to starting and then creating a system so that it's repeatable. And then you can iterate on that system, whatever that looks like for you. I think the coolest part about YouTube, honestly, is that it's all editable. You, so you can go back later and you can say like, oh, actually, I don't like any of our thumbnails. And you, can, you could spend the time and go back and change them all. Or, you know, hey, the description that I have here is no longer relevant because I built out a completely new website. You can go back and add all that in. Um, there's places to add information about music. There's places to add links so that they appear as cards in your video. There are places to connect everything together. It really creates this, like, we talk about the internet as this web, right? YouTube is great at that, great at creating this entire web as you input all of that data. But you can go back and change any of those things. You can say, like, connect this playlist with this playlist, turn this playlist into a podcast and keep this one as as a regular playlist. You, You are giving them the information of what you want them to do with it. I think it's just got a lot of potential as far as that goes. But you're right. You can't do any of it if you don't start with some kind of information. But just don't panic. (laughs) Hitchhiker's Guide. (laughs) Don't panic. Grab your towel. Don't panic. Put some initial information in and go from there. It's a really nice, like we said at the beginning, it's a really nice way to start with a podcast because it is the, in many ways, the hardest part. And the part that people have a hard time wrapping their head around is how can I start with video? How can I do it with video? If you start with video and you start on a platform like YouTube, the rest of it is pretty easy downhill from there. So (laughs) you check the video box and everything else is easy to grab from that place. You can pull the audio out, you can send it across, you can pull the transcript to make a blog post, you can build a website. You, You can do all of that once you've started and it's free and pretty easy to start with. So. Listen, here's how I can tell you in a matter of steps. I can't even tell you what the number is because I can just do it out of the top of my head. But here are the steps to start a YouTube podcast. Go to Google, sign in, create a YouTube channel. It's going to give you a bunch of holes to fill out that you have to fill out. Just fill them out. And then once you're done, okay, stop doing that. Then take this phone, stack it on a stack of books, put the camera on, and say whatever you have to say about Beanie Babies for the next five minutes, okay? Once you're done with that file, don't do anything with it. Just upload it to YouTube into that segment. Repeat that a couple of times a month until you have 10. And now it's a playlist and now it's a podcast. Then you say, hey, people are starting to like this. Cool. Go get a camera. All right, let's pick, I don't know, Insta360 Link or Ozby Tiny or whatever. Now you just got a better camera. Now you're doing it better. Now you're starting to put things in your background that look like Beanie Babies and whatever. Okay, that's cool. Let's go get a Sony. Bam, now I got a Sony and a microphone and more Beanie Babies. And I'm inviting in a guest (laughs) and I'm using Ecamm and now I'm going to actually edit these episodes and I'm actually going to put thought and thumbnails. I mean, like, everyone's looking for some magic box. There is none. You look, Grandma said, ain't nothing to it but to do it. Actually, it was uh, Maya Angelou, but... (laughs) There ain't nothing to it but to do it. The only way to get to what you think is polished that all of the episodes and the people that are doing what they're doing is polished is by doing it. And one of my favorites, way back when I first got hired at Ecamm, I found out that Katie and I were both listening to True Crime podcasts. Like, I went into it kicking and screaming, and then I ended up liking it. <laughs> there was these two girls out of Boston. Their podcast is called Morbid. And they were hot trash, but there was something about them that was funny and entertaining. And so I send it to Katie. I'm like, check these guys out. They're not Audio Chuck yet, which is Ashley and what's her face? Crime Junkies. What's that thing called? Crime Junkies. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. They weren't Crime Junkies yet. They weren't serial, but they were cute that they were just starting out and like, you know, basically sitting in their house on pillows in the couch and just saying whatever came to their (laughs) mind. And it was. It was raw trash, but it was fun to listen to anyway, because it was entertaining to see the scrappy kids trying to get to that level. They are freaking massive now. And I think Mm -hmm. they probably grew faster than junkies. Why? Because people could relate to two homies sitting on the couch, puffing a spliff 
in talking about their case. Like, I understood that more than a, hi, this is Ashley from Crime Junkies. I'm recording this podcast with a studio and a production team of 50. You know, they just, you couldn't get that. But you could totally get two friends sitting around drinking, having a blast, and talking about something that they watched on Oxygen, you know? And that's more relatable. So, fam, just start. Like, really just start. One of our people in our circle is like, I'm going to launch on this day because I need to do this, 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 and this. And I'm like, no, you don't. You need to just launch now and then get better. (laughs) Because, like, you're missing the opportunity to get better. And you're going to try to launch what you think is perfect. And you're going to find the hiccups live because that's when you find them. And then Mm -hmm. you're going to back off. But if you start with ain't nobody watching, you can make all of the mistakes when ain't nobody watching. And then (laughs) by the time, you know, you get to the point where people are watching, you're you're good. Nobody even knows about Fulgens and Anna playing that first Ecamm video I made. Damn it, Fulgens. (laughs) Like, that was, to me, it's trash. Everybody else is laughing. They think it's funny. (laughs) Yeah. And what's cool about it is that it becomes easier and easier to replicate, right? So again, I, I, we do it as a live format, so you don't need to. It is easier. I'll tell you, even though it doesn't feel like it, it really is. But now it's literally, so we have our, you know, our templated thumbnail. It's in Canva. It's a template. I just click duplicate. I change the title of it. Then I take that. I go over into YouTube. I click that I'm going to schedule a go live. It comes up and it says, do you want to duplicate one of your former lives? I say yes. And I select last week's flow episode. And then I just change the title and I change the beginning of the description. But all of the rest of it is all a template. All of the settings are the same. I filled them at once and I'm duplicating it every single time. And then it's scheduled and it's up there and I can share it and promote it. And it's part of the the overall kind of podcasting experience. But I only really had to do all of the like upfront work initially. And then everything else is just part of a template and a process. We could change the template at any point. We could decide we want a different description or we want a different logo. And that's fine. We can go back and do that at any point. As I said, we've done things like go back and add chapters or we've linked videos together or we've added additional resources or built out show notes. All of that we can go back in later and do. But the really the process is it's all templatized. It's all just repeating the same thing over and over again, which makes it really fast and really easy. I don't have to think about it. So it, if you can get into that habit, and again, like Doc said, you can start with whatever, but you can get into that habit. Once you have a few of them uploaded, duplicate them. It's just, it's the same, yeah. it's the same yeah. you know, basic format for your description. It's the same basic, for, whatever that is. Like it could be your title every week could be like, you know, the flow episode one, hyphen this name of it the flow episode two hyphen this like that's okay and then later go back and see if there's a punchier title that you want to add later but you might be fine with that like it's really needs to just be as easy as whatever you can replicate week after week or month after month whatever your your cadence is for how often you're going to release an episode here's what's cool i had a buddy of mine named sam back in the day he used to do a three-minute podcast and they were epic. And yeah. it was because he didn't take it seriously. He was kind of joking because all of the podcasts <laughs> back then were basically, tr- in the very beginning, all the podcasts was trying to replicate radio and TV, right? Yeah. They were trying so hard, but the equipment was out of reach, whatever. It was super out of reach. So Sam had this crazy idea. He's just going to come up every day with an app. He's just going to pick a random app out of the <laughs> iPhone store because at that time, the app store was brand new and he would just talk for two to three minutes about any random app that he found in the app store he ended up being one of the number one podcasts <laughs> for a while yeah. and he stopped doing it but like he got invited to every show every uh mac world or ces or whatever some app company would pay for him to come to the floor and help rep their app but it was literally simple and he did it starting out as a joke like 100 percent as a joke but you'd be surprised at what people relate to. So if you're thinking, oh, I got to go do an hour every week. I don't have that. Don't do an hour. Yeah. Aubrey's show is the Aubrey uh, one minute-ish, right? Ish. And it ain't <laughs> never a minute, <laughs> but it's good. And it's just like, yo, she's been doing it for years now. And you just get up and you just do it. And that repetition and that doing something consistently has completely helped that sister out, you know, and she's loving it. You know, she gets a kick out of it. We get a kick out of it. 
You don't have to like stress yourself out. If you're just starting and you're trying like, I just need to do this, make it five minutes on whatever you know how to talk about. Yep. You know, whatever you want it to be, whether it's wood carving or stealing your grandmother's recipes or whatever, that's it. You can completely yeah. do that. So George is saying that, that he feels like a live broadcast is easier because he's been watching ours and they're relatable and they're human. Honestly, like if I could go back and do it over again, and the advice that I would give everyone listening and watching right now is it's actually really freeing when you're okay with the fact that no one is watching. Don't promote your first like five or six episodes, whether you do them yeah. live or you're recording them and putting them up there. Don't tell anyone. Create the channel. Start. Practice. If you really hate them, delete them. Although I would say just keep them up. Knowing that no one is necessarily going to show up or maybe it's just like a friend or two that you've told that are going to be there to kind of sit in the shadows and watch is really freeing. Paul mentioned something, and I, I swear I say this every time, and I swear people still do not connect to it. So I'm going to force people to do this pretty soon. You have to watch your one-hour local news or watch any sporting mm -hmm. event. I don't care what it is, golf, tennis, whatever, horse racing, whatever, any sporting event where there is literally billions of dollars of equipment and watch them do a live broadcast. And there is never not a hiccup, not ever. The mm -hmm. Super Bowl has done like, yo, Janet popped a boob out, fam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it, it, please stop. Like if you watch any live production on TV today, your local news forward, there's always a minor hiccup. They'll be shuffling the papers and drop a paper on the floor. Or they'll talk to the weatherman and he'd be over here and he'd be like, hey, oh, yes, by the way, uh, we got this windstorm coming in today and it's going to blow Honolulu off the map. And then he'll go back, you know, to doing something like today. Watch any live program that's more than an hour and it is never perfect. I worked in this production world. You should hear what's going on in our ears the whole time. Like, so please stop thinking that because there is no perfect. And if you're really good and I want to challenge you. We should actually do this one day for your VHS club. Let's pull out the movie mistakes that are in movies and show a bunch of them <laughs> because be fun, you yeah. have watched some stuff in the theater and have not realized that I am having the conniption fit and the meltdown and I'm holding this coffee in my left hand. And then all of a sudden I have the stand in cup in my hand because I actually stopped to drink, but I was just running a line, but it was perfect. And they said, keep it. And you didn't even realize I got the wrong cup or the wrong hat or my hair is out of position or glasses on, glasses off type of situation. Continuity yeah. mistakes are all over the place in multi-billion dollar film enterprises. It's so true. So just stop it. You know what? I got to bring this up because it's funny to me. It was one of the first ones that I noticed and then I went looking for them. Pee Wee Herman just recently mm -hmm. passed. Rest in peace, Paul. But there was a scene in the movie where he has his bike and he rolls up and he goes to pull the chain. <laughs> he goes to pull the chain out of the panner on the side of the bike. And it's just mm -hmm. this endless chain that's coming and coming and coming and coming. Well, where you normally notice these is when these things got moved from the big screen to the VHS. The big screen mm -hmm. was 16 by 9, which we're all fully accustomed to now. But the VHS mm -hmm. back in the day was 4 by 3. It was going to be cropped mm -hmm. in and something called pan and scan, where they would move the camera around and just try to present to you the most relevant portion of that widescreen so it would fit on your TV. Which is why on TNT, there used to be the thing, this film has been properly adapted in order to fit for TV. You know, yeah, exactly. you saw that every everything, right? Yep. What you noticed is on the side of the bike, there's a Home Depot bucket full of chain. <laughs> and there's actually a guy adding more chain to the bucket. So as Pee Wee like... is talking and pulling the chain, you can yeah. see the rim of the Home Depot bucket where he's actually pulling the chain out of, you know? Yep. And that was one of the first ones that I ever noticed. And after that, I went looking for continuity mistakes. So just yeah. trust you, fam. I, if we can't tell you nothing in this show, this show should be called Forget about perfect. There ain't no damn such thing. <laughs> that should be the name <laughs> of this show. All right. Well, we're nearing the end, but I did want to cover one thing that I know comes up a lot. This is for the existing audio only podcasters who are like trying to wrap their heads around. How do I now add in YouTube or how do I now add in video to my podcast? And what 
I will say, and I'm interested to hear Doc's opinion, but what I will say is start fresh. So whether you've had your podcast for two years or 15 years or whatever amount it is, it's audio only. Today, open up a YouTube channel, name it your podcast name, fill out all the descriptions about how amazing your podcast is, drop in your what you know, your website, your link on Captivate, wherever your podcast host is, let everyone know where to listen to your podcast, where to catch past episodes. And your next episode, do it video first, and then just go forward from there. So don't worry about your however many years of backlog that are audio only, totally fine. Those stay audio only. But from this day forward, add in video. If you are not at a point where you think you can do that consistently for whatever reason, no worries. Open the YouTube channel. (laughs) And do a couple of special video events. So do like a behind the scenes or a Q&A that's video only and start getting comfortable and build your channel out that way. And then add in your video episodes when you're ready. But like I would say, and then George is making me laugh. This is coming from not one, but two Virgos sitting here. <laughs> that's what I'm just, just start. So don't worry about trying to backtrack and trying to add all of that content in. You already have a platform. You already have all of your people. Let your people know you're adding in video. It's super exciting. Get started and just start from there and go forward. So that's one of those cases where you don't need to worry about going back and editing. Anyway, that would be my advice now after hearing a bunch of people talk. And I think Doc's on the same page as me. I have to spoil something, George, because George George mentioned it. So it's funny to me because I'm laughing because George made that comment about being Virgos. Here's something that Paul and Luis know and maybe Aubrey. I'm just looking at who's all in the chat right now. And Rich knows there is nobody that plans harder than Katie. Okay, I would just tell you, <laughs> Kate, Katie was born with a freaking file of facts in her hand. And when it became digital, it turned into whatever that she uses now, click up. But there's nobody that plans harder than Katie. And it still goes sideways. And it's not, it's not from not planning, because trust you me, this lady is a consummate planner. Like if there was a planning Olympics, she would be gold medal. <laughs> okay. But hey, stuff happens. And so it's <laughs> exactly right. Andy said yeah. you probably planned the whole vacation. It's <laughs> right. Like we're gonna go here. Andy, you will laugh. I did not because Dane told me I couldn't. Shut up. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I'm, I man, did not. Hey, look, when I come there this week, I'm gonna go to your house and I'm gonna ask Dane. I'm like, Dane, you can listen, ask him. Did she really plan that? And he'd be like, No, okay, I'll believe him. Because <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. And that's and that's what but the cool thing is to know yeah. that, right? No matter how much you plan, it can still go psycho. Just just enjoy it, man. This the journey yeah. is so much fun. And I think a lot of people make it seem scary because everyone's so busy trying to everyone's trying to be something. Just be. Look, just be. All the other stuff is out the window. Stop your sentence at just be and do it. Please. Just I just be it. do it. <laughs> All right. And if you need help like step-by-step setting up a YouTube channel or you just want someone there on the line with you, you can always find us in the Ecamm Live community. If you want to get over there, that is ecamm.tv slash community or on Discord, ecamm.tv slash Discord. I promise you there are people there, myself included, Doc included. We'd be more than happy to sit there and answer questions or jump on and say like, hey, actually you need to fill out this field or answer how we're doing what we're doing. We're happy to do a step-by-step. With this episode, we just really wanted to let you know it's not that big a thing. It seems like a big thing. It's not that big a thing. Fill out the fields. You're not going to screw it up. If you do screw it up, quote unquote, it's fixable. So go back and fix it. It's 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 all all, all good, but it's all fixable. We are there to help all the way through. All right, Doc, we're going to do final everything. And then for our live studio audience, we're going to do a fun celebration. So if you missed it, if you missed our fun celebration and our very cool giveaway, it means that you need to hang out with us next time in the live studio audience. You can find us every Tuesday, 12 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube to join the live studio audience. And then you can participate in all of the fun stuff that we're about to do. Yes. And you can find the flow at flow.ecam.com. If you go to flow.ecam.com, it will allow you to subscribe to this podcast anywhere your podcast getting is got. And uh, yeah, if you like this so far, please jump on over and leave a review or better yet, send someone else who needs to hear this. And quick reminder and thank you to our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Descript. Descript is the secret freaking weapon. Okay, I was going to insert some more rich bad words here. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? If you had the script, 
You can just highlight them and delete them and no one would even know that Doc was about to say some fruity language because this script basically allows you to edit your podcast the same way you would edit a Word document. You'll highlight the parts that you like and delete the parts that you don't and it will automatically chop your audio slash video and allow you to basically send out your podcast from there. You have all of the tools that are available to you like any regular audio editor, but it's just simpler because if you know how to edit a Word document, you're good to go. And you know what? They just added a whole bunch of cool AI features that are totally worth checking out. So go over and check out Descript. It's at Descript.com. And yeah, you can say Descript, but I'm always call it Descript because it sounds French. (laughs) 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 That, my friends, is called a live read. (laughs) That's just how you do them. (laughs) <laughs> That's what I, do. I absolutely love it. Well, happy flow anniversary! Thank you so much for all being flow riders. Yeah, I can't believe stick we around did it. if you're in the live studio audience, and if you are listening, we appreciate you, and we'll see you next week. Flow riders out. <laughs>